You mentioned Lana Del Rey, Dave, beat, beat out by Tool for number one. Uh, but Lana, I don't know. She's interesting, and I want to I want to review the album. And I also want to talk a little bit about her as a uh, uh, a star in, in today's mm-hmm. culture. But did did you feel like this album should have been the number one ahead of Tool in terms of quality? I, I certainly liked it more, um, which surprised me because I haven't really liked any of her albums before. I think we briefly touched on her most recent album, Lust for Life, in 2017. Mm-hmm. Basically, by saying we we didn't like it, we didn't really care for it, and we kind of move on quickly, right? And she's always been someone that I've been more interested in. I think her 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 persona, her celebrity, and we'll get to that more than her actual music, which I didn't think quite you know uh, warranted all the attention she got as a figure. But this uh, fifth major label album for her, Norman Fucking Rockwell. Definitely my favorite album she's released, and a lot of people are calling it her best that know her past work better than I. Uh, I liked it a lot, and I thought uh, I finally like, got the essence of like who she is as an artist for the first time, or maybe maybe she just kind of distilled that into something more tangible this time around. Uh, so yeah, I, I was actually quite impressed with this one. What did you think about it? Uh, I thought they should have renamed the album to jack fucking antonoff because yeah. <laughs> uh god damn everything he touches i seem to just like and the funny thing was i i got through the album and i went i was like man i gotta go see who produces this because i feel like Antonov had to be a, on at least one of these tracks and when i saw his name all throughout i was like oh, 10 of 13 one song is sublime cover so we discount <laughs> that 10 of 13 songs he wrote and produced crazy jack okay. antonoff this his, is right his... after he did the, t- the taylor swift record man the hottest producer in the game yeah coming off lover to this and there's such different uh types of albums and needed such different types of production and he just can't miss like it's it's crazy and just the little subtleties he does on this album i can't remember if it's on uh the first song norman fucking rockwell or the second one but there's one part where after the chorus and it's like i I think the third or fourth time the chorus come around on the track like this little harp just plays for like five seconds and i was like oh that's like such a nice little touch that like added so much to that moment uh, and then i was just like this guy really knows what he's doing in terms of making pop music in all different spheres uh, i've actually been going back and listening to bleachers a lot recently because i've just been like really impressed with him but um yeah overall i found this to be by far my favorite listen to Atlanta del rey album um and I, you know, I was thinking about what I usually really like about albums like this because it's it's not very energetic. Um, it's it kind of reminds me of uh, a little bit more distilled thing that, like the Arctic Monkeys were going for, where I kind of just imagine Lana sitting at a piano in a hotel lobby, like singing these like weird tunes. And I feel like she creates such an ambiance throughout this whole record especially like you get to the third track of Venice Bitch and it's this nine minute like yeah I don't know like epic lullaby psychedelic trip I don't even know how to describe it really but it's just a really amazing song and I'm like wow I really just feel like I'm like in this where this headspace wherever she's trying to take us and I was just right. really impressed with how she did that throughout yeah what's always been interesting about her you know like the whole like 50s 60s Americana inspiration that's been in her music the whole time i think this time because it's it's a contemporary record so it's uh the observations are uh it's more 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 wrought than in the past mm-hmm. uh it, i think it really worked i think jack's influence i assume is why the melodies on norman fucking rockwell are just like more pronounced despite the fact that it's still lana's modest delivery uh the beats are still pretty uh you know, lo-fi, uh, uh, less pronounced, you know, mm-hmm. and like her past albums. But Jack, I think, just kind of got Lana just a little bit further into uh, making songs that I actually can like really like latch on to as opposed to just kind of fade in and out the way I do a lot of other past songs. Um, and Venice Bitch, yeah. That's a song where, again, like I-, I could probably lose the last four minutes, which is kind of just a weird outro. But that first four and a half minutes is fucking really good. Yeah, you know? it's a, it's a strong, strong song overall. 
Um, and I felt like there weren't really many misses throughout this record. Um, you know, I do it, the doing time cover, I guess, is probably the, the biggest miss for me, but only because I think, like, for myself as someone that in high school and college really, like, liked Sublime and was really into that. And, like, a lot of the people in my life have really liked Sublime and mm-hmm. it feels almost like sacrilegious in a sense, but she does add her own spin to it and it's still a good cover. It just feels, like, wrong in a sense for, <laughs> for someone to be covering it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I really liked, uh, the greatest California. Um, I mean, hope is a dangerous thing for a woman to have. I felt like made a lot more sense at, with the record than, uh, as a single back in January. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, Norman fucking Rockwell, the first song, I was like, banger starts off yeah. with, uh, it's like, fuck about men. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that, that man child line, like starts it off. You're just like, Ooh, <laughs> God damn, she's got a sharp tongue on this. Um, and her writing on this is really, really yeah. fun throughout. On the greatest culture was lit. I had a ball, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Signing off, bang, bang, kiss, kiss. Yeah, a lot, a lot of lyrics worked on this one. Um, yeah. yeah, as I was listening, you know, and I was like, realizing I was liking it, I was like, has my, have my taste has changed? Like, I've liked a lot of pot music the past few years. Am I, am I just different now? Yeah. Do I like Lana Del Rey this whole time? I was like, oh no, no, it's just better. It's just, it's just, she's like leveled up. That's why I like it. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, she's been so popular, uh, and I, I didn't really get her popularity, but I feel like when you produce an album like this, it's easy to understand why people have liked her, and they've obviously seen something in her music that maybe we haven't tapped into or been able to access. And I guess I wonder how, how do you see her within like, like the zeitgeist right now? Is she just like the queen of the, of the, the sads and the moody? Like what is she? Yeah. It's weird because her biggest, she only has one top 10 hit on billboard. And that's the, uh, oh, fuck, what's that? Born to die. C- Cedric, Cedric Gervais DJ remix of summertime sadness, not the original mm-hmm. version. Um, then you look uh, on YouTube and like songs like Born to Die got like, you know, hundreds of millions of views and stuff. Mm-hmm. But so I think, I think some of these songs probably would have charted, uh, higher. They came out now in the, the current streaming landscape. But, you know, uh, Born to Die, that second album, that major label debut is one of three female albums to spend 300 weeks on the Billboard 200 chart. So that's a long ass time, right? So more albums will get there. You just gotta, that, that's a, that's several years where he's gonna get there. But, it speaks to, I think, her music and her fan base being pretty consistent. Yeah. And it's weird because ever since she, like, debuted, you know, at the turn of the decade, she got, like, a lot of shit, right, for, like, things she's, like, putting her foot in her mouth for, like, talking about feminism and, like, people going after her image and calling it fake and stuff, right? And it's, like, we're doing all this about someone who, uh, you know, in, in our opinion, didn't make that great music in the beginning. Mm-hmm. But she was always really, really famous, and I guess like I think like probably the end of Tumblr probably really helped her, uh, her her fan base in the early days, you know, pre stand culture we have today. But yeah, it's it's funny, you know, th- this year we got Ariana, Taylor, and Lana all dropping really distinct, really strong, and really different pop albums. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, yes, she technically only came in third with Melba Puff and Rockwell, but still hundred four thousand first week for a kind of alt pop album that's pretty uh low energy i mean that, that says a lot so i think uh i guess like as for like a second act for her career uh this is this is a great way to start it off yeah Shout she out has to su- enough. yeah she has such an interest interesting aesthetic and i feel like that plays such a role into like her fan base so I, th- I feel like there's something about like the way she plays on like the irony of Americana in a lot of senses mm-hmm. that uh, people really dig. And uh, I think that that kind of makes her the floor of her success pretty high. Um, and obviously this just like created a much higher ceiling, at, at least in my eyes for w- what she can be as an artist. You mentioned those, those three. And I thought I read a report recently that Adele is moving towards releasing music soon. So it'd be pretty interesting if we get those four, women right. dropping albums in a year it's pretty heavy hitters just missing beyonce from that really and probably lord so yeah yeah where, where's lord ants off get her out there Let's yeah ja- jack's jack's gotta make time you know <laughs> yeah, right. i'll get to the session soon 
got away a little bit. Go back to Australia. <laughs> so the the interesting thing is going to be if uh, Antonoff produces this Haim record that should be coming out pretty soon. So right. I feel like if he worked with Taylor, worked with Lord, Haim kind of runs in that group too. Like feels mm-hmm. like a sure thing, and that will that that could be really interesting. Sounds like to me. You know, I actually just saw this today. Uh, Ariana, Miley Cyrus, and Lana are dropping a song called Angel from the upcoming Charlie's Angels movie soundtrack this mm-hmm. Friday. So that's uh, that's got some star power. Yeah, for real. So bang Bang 2.0 for Ariana. We'll see. 